Hello everyone and welcome to another Stormworks video. I hope you're all well and staying safe in these tough times. Now in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to build a slave master system for your train here in Stormworks. This will allow you to control multiple trains at once uh, using one train itself and it can work in either direction. We'll go over all the components you'll need, we'll show you how to set up all the logic, how to get everything connected up and then we'll actually go and test it here in the world of Stormworks. Now if you're enjoying this video, comment below and what else you'd like to see in any of my future videos. While you're there, don't forget that like and subscribe button and click the little bell icon to be notified of my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So I said, let's get straight into it and get started with this video. So to get started, we're back here at the train yard and we're gonna carry on building with our example that we've used in a couple of the other videos already. We've shown you how to build a generator, we've shown you how to build a train and also how to do a set speed hold. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be building the master slave system for the train so we can connect multiple trains to this train. Now, there's a couple of things we need before we actually get started. The first thing we want is some way to actually completely turn the train on or off. That way we're not controlling trains that we don't want to control, okay? So the easiest way to do that is simply to go and let's go and get a breaker. So you can see here we'll get an electrical circuit breaker and we'll tell the train whether it's gonna be on or off. We can then just go and disconnect our power. So disconnecting our power just over here and we're simply gonna take the battery into our breaker and then from our breaker back to our electrical motor which is connected to everything else that way if we go and spawn the train now we won't be able to actually do anything everything is off but as soon as we turn it on we can obviously now go in do a couple things okay, so that's the first prerequisite we have to have the second thing is we're actually going to improve on our limited spit speed Okay, at the moment we're controlling it using uh, two push buttons here, which is plus and minus to increase or decrease the speed. We're gonna change that, we're gonna change it to the seat. We're gonna actually get the seat now to control that. Okay, and we're also gonna get the seat to control our brakes now. So we're gonna improve on that functionality. And to do that, we're gonna go back into our old microprocessor and we're gonna come into editing it. At the moment, you can see it's getting those two push buttons. We're gonna change those two push buttons to one composite because the seat has one composite. And we're going to be using a threshold gate to read that, okay? We're gonna go add two threshold gates. We're gonna say, if it's one by one, it's gonna go and increase it. And if it's a negative one and negative one, then it's gonna go and decrease it, okay? So you can simply just go and remove these two now by going back and taking, getting rid of this one and getting rid of this one and replacing it with instead one composite input just over here from that's from seat data we can now go and take that seat data and get it connected up to this but we first need to decode it okay to decode it we can just simply go and get a read so we're going to be reading a number and we're going to be reading our wns okay ws is going to be on channel 2 if you're ever unsure on what channel the seat sends on, you can simply go to your logic, go to composite, hover over there, and you can see that we have on off is hotkeys one plus, etc. And you can see value two is WS. Perfect. While we're here, we get that connected up and we can go back into our microprocessor. So let's go and get value two. And that's gonna now, if it's reading a one and one, it's gonna go and increase our throttle. If it's reading a minus one, minus one, it's gonna go and decrease our throttle. We can go and save that and last thing I usually like to do is just increase the sensitivity of my seat to about a let's go with a hundred percent on reset okay save here we can go and spawn it in again send the seat give it some power and W yep it's gonna increase it S decreased it etc so you can use your now use your WS to control that really quite useful we're gonna do the same with a break okay Brake is currently controlled for using our up and down. And up and down is if we go to composite once again, you will see up and down is actually value number four. So we're gonna go back into our microprocessor here and we're going to go and take this composite single and grab channel number four, okay? And take it and we're gonna go and send it out by simply controlling and doing a brand new node for that. Okay, so that's gonna be brakes and it's gonna be our number and it's going to be output perfect and we can now go and get that connected up 
to our actual brakes there. Make sure it's on channel four and we should be able to control our brakes. So let's go and test that. Make sure we connect our logic. So we now have a brand new node for our brakes. We're gonna steal it instead of the seat controlling it, we're gonna control it using the composite. This is gonna make it easier for when we actually start building the master slave system because then we only have two nodes that we need to actually transfer across. There we go, and now we're moving forwards. Okay, we can check our brakes just by simply going and doing that, put the brakes on. Okay, and you can see we've come to a halt. Perfect. Okay, let's go and bring this back into our workbench. Now we can actually start building our actual master slave system. And the easiest thing to do is we're gonna go into our microprocessor again and we're gonna go and create a new one. We're gonna call this our slave master slave master train okay. size we're going to leave it as normal size as it is right now we're going to go into our logic and we're going to add a couple things the first thing we're going to have is our composite in this is going to be from our seat okay this is going to come in from our seat the next thing we need to do is of course go and send it out to our radio we're going to be using a radio for this example and lastly we also need a composite in and that's going to be coming from our radio so we have three nodes so far, okay? Pretty much that's all you need at the moment. You can add another one for your frequency if you want this microprocessor to actually control your frequency of your actual train itself. Once we're happy with that, we can now go into our logic, okay? Once we're in our logic, we can just separate everything out like I usually do here. So we have our four different components. The first thing we're going to worry about is actually sending data across. So you can see here we have our seat data and we want to get that sent out. So ideally, all you actually have to do is just send it out. That's it. It's really simple, really easy. We can now then focus on our radio frequency. Now you can use a slider for this. You could use a keypad. I'm just going to use a constant number for our frequency. We're going to say it's going to be on frequency. Let's go with 55. Okay, so now we're sending the data out and we have all this information. The next thing we want to do is obviously receive data. Okay, and the receiving data is going to come from our radio. We want to send that back out to our other system. So we need to add another node in. So I'm going to increase the size. We'll increase this as we go out through this tutorial. And we're going to now go and send this to our seat out data. Okay, and that's going to be sent out. So we can go back into our logic now and we can tell the system, okay, we want you to send that out. That's gonna go back into that microprocessor that's controlling the speed and also our actual brakes, okay? But the only thing is what happens if this is the master train? What happens to all these controls? Well, what we want to do is we actually wanna send this seat data back into the seat out. And we can use do that by using a simple composite switch box there we go and we can put that down so we're going to tell the system okay if you're on so if you're a master train we're going to send this across into our actual microprocessor if you're not a master train you're going to be a slave and you're going to send the data that you receive via your actual frequency we need to now add a node to tell the train whether it's master or if it's slave to do that we can simply go and add another logic node and we can tell it to be master. Now you could use the seat and you could use your hotkeys on your seat. I prefer to use a toggle button. So we're going to just be using a master button there. I'm going to get that connected up and we can now go and save this. So I'm going to go and save it. I'm going to call it slave master train, do a brand new one. And let's call it slave master train. Close out of here. Let's go to our inventory. Let's go and find it. There it is right there. And we can now add it in. The component we also need here is going to be a radio. You can use any size. I like to use the small ones. I think it's more than enough range on them. And we also need a button. This will tell us whether we are a master train or a slave train. So master train. Perfect. Now we can go and get everything connected. So we're going to take our master train button, get that connected to our master button over here. And we're also going to use that master button to actually send signals out on our radio. So transmitting, we connect our frequency up to our frequency. 
and then all we have to do now is connect our composite. So instead of the data coming from our seat straight into our actual mic controller that's controlling our brakes and our speed, we're going to send it through into our actual microprocessor over here that's controlling our slave master system. So it's now going in here through our seat. From the seat or from this microprocessor, it's then going to go to the radio. It's going to come back from the radio into the microprocessor and then from the microprocessor back into our speed set system. Okay. Once you're all done with that, you can obviously go and connect up your electricity to anything that you haven't connected. So I haven't connected my button and I haven't connected my actual radio. So that's the last thing we need to do here. Now this system would work, however there's a couple things missing. The first thing is of course you need some way to actually go and get your different trains connected. I'm just going to be simply using a pivot here and we're going to be putting an electrical connector on it and that way we're going to tell the train to get connected into each other. So we can go and search for electric and we'll go over electric connector and that way we can go and join other trains to it. Now the last thing and probably the keen eye above you will probably say well what happens if the train is facing the other direction? So for example if we go and connect another train the back here which is facing the opposite direction it's going to contradict each other and you would be correct it is. So we need to go and add another level complexity into this tell the train whether it's meant to go in forwards position or it's meant to go in a backwards position. We're going to go into our design we're going to add a new node here. That unit is going to tell it to go forward or backwards. Now if you're always sending everything backwards you could ignore this or if you're always sending everything forward you could ignore this but I like to interchange on which direction my trains are going in. So we're going to have a simple on off for that. Go back into our logic here and now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're now going to interfere with the signal that's coming through here. We're going to tell the signal, hey, if you are going in a different direction, we want to invert our throttle. But if you're going in a certain direction, we don't want to invert it. And that's what we're going to be using this on off button for. So we're going to first off go and decrypt our information that's coming in via our composite over here. Okay. And that's giving us a number. We're then going to invert that number. However, if you go and search here, we don't actually have an invert. So you're going to be using a function block. All we have to use for the function block is we're going to take it. We're going to say minus X. That's negative now. Just like that. Really easy and really simple. Don't forget to put your channel here as two. And now we're going to go and get a switch box. And we'll go over the details in a few seconds. So we're going to say if this train is going forwards, okay, so if everything is going forwards, we want to take the original value that we have in the train, okay? Perfect. However, if you're going backwards, which is going to be off from here, we want to invert that number and it's going to come through here. We can then simply just go and recrypt it and send it back into this switch box. So we can go back down go and add a write and we're going to write a number and we're going to take that and we're going to write it to this data. Don't forget to put your channels please as I said earlier on this is going on channel 2 make sure this is on channel 2 also and now it's going to switch depending on if it you want it to go forwards or backwards. As I said here at the moment if we have this on it's going to go forwards if it's going to be off it's going to be going backwards. We can now go and save that at our last button in that we need and we can go and get that connected up so on is equal to forward and off is equal to backwards go and get that connected up with electricity of course and go and connect it to the node of your actual slave master train you can now go and spawn this in we're going to test it as a normal train just by itself to make sure it works power on forwards oh, we forgot to put the master train on master train forwards there we go stop forwards stop right that's working okay let's go spawn another train in now once we go spawn the other train in so we're just going to go back go and grab our auto save here and we're simply going to go and invert this Okay, you could obviously use the tracks to train direction if you wanted to. I'm just going to simply just go and actually invert it. All I have to do is cut it, use K to rotate it, 
move it across to the center of the train. There we go, fantastic. Perfect. Spawn that in. Spawn in. Train should be now inverted. Yes, it is. Great. Let's go and reverse this train into it. Okay, so everything is good still. We can use our S key to reverse it. There we go. It's gotten connected now. We can now go and turn this train on. And we're going to go and tell it that it needs to be off, which is going backwards, which it is. It's going backwards and it's not the master train. So you can leave those completely off. All we need to do is add the power on. Now, if we add the power and we go back to this train, if we use our S and our W, we should now be going forwards. And you can see, actually, this is not even connected here. And you can see both the trains are working in perfect parallel to each other. If I go and put it in reverse, they both go in reverse. They both work completely with each other, which is really cool. Okay. Everything we send on the one train is getting reversed on the other train. Now, if they, move, if they were both going forwards, I can, of course, as I said earlier, we could go onto this train. We could go and possibly tell it, okay, you're now going forwards. That way, the throttle is going to go that way instead of backwards on this train. So this is a really cool system. You can obviously add as many cars as you want to. You can tell different directions. You can add different nodes to this. This is completely up to you on what you would like to use this for. But it's a nice little tutorial. Um, hopefully you guys have been enjoying the series. Comment below on what you would like to see next, whether it's an automatic train system, a, uh, maybe a GPS system, a uh, train track system. You guys let me know in the video comments below. So I think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.